Santiago Calatrava is here. The Spanish architect is also an artist and an engineer. He combines technology and art to create structures that are visually striking. Nature and movement are two guiding forces in his work. Allusions to rib cages, the human eye, and birds' wings frequently occur in his designs. Initially most well known for his signature bridges in Europe, he has recently unveiled his first building in the United States, the expansion of the Milwaukee Art Museum. We were looking for someone who would be very respectful of the two earlier buildings, and we were particularly looking for someone who would be very sensitive to our site on the lakefront, because we felt that that was a kind of treasured site uh, in Milwaukee. And finally, I think we were looking for a dramatic architect. We were looking for an architect who could build a building that said art or art museum. We were looking for a signature building. I think that once this project was on the radar screen and it caught the imagination of the community, I was really excited about it because it did get people to start thinking, well, we can do it here in Milwaukee. I knew that Calatrava felt that we could do it here in Milwaukee. He had great, a great vision. I am sure that there is not a good project, you know, a built project, you know, without a good client behind it. Because the first vision, you know, the decision, I want to do a special building. I want to do a beautiful building. I want to do a building with this belongs much more to the client than to the architect. I am pleased to have Santiago Calatrava to this table for the first time. Welcome. Thank you. It's good to have you here. Uh, I want to first just talk some broad ideas, and then we'll talk about Milwaukee, which is, uh, uh, which is rather a stunning achievement on your part. Um, what's, do you define yourself as an artist, as an architect, as an engineer, or what? Well, maybe looking it from outside, uh, and since we are accustomed to make distinctions between the different professions, is a little bit difficult uh, to uh, understand that someone can be the three things at the same time. But when you are inside, you see that between architecture and engineering, um, there is almost no difference. And between the fact of bringing both professions, you know, to an artistical level, there is also just a goal, you know, yeah. and uh, uh, so the. Uh, trying to do something artistical is legitimate for an architect mm -hmm. and an engineer. So mm -hmm. there is in the fact no difference. Mm -hmm. We think of engineering as science. We think of art as art and we think of architecture somewhere in between. Yes. Which is it? Yes, you see in the fact uh, um, the profession of architecture and engineering they are linked together by the art of construction. And if you look back, you know, let's say 200 years ago there was effectively no difference. So the, the understanding of engineering as a science, it may maybe be because he's looking at it more from the point of view of the science of construction. But still the goal of putting a bridge in landscape or putting a cathedral in the middle of a city is the same, uh, the same thing. I mean, a bridge uh, has an impact, you see, and a presence, and uh, dignifies the landscape in a way, or it is pot mm. uh, potentially can do that. It can enhance the landscape. Exactly. can enhance places that exactly. don't have Exactly. A quality. Once a bridge is yeah. there, it can give them something yeah. because it spans and and adds to their yes. what they project to the community. Yes, and think for a moment. You see, in the United States, you have many good examples, but one is particular, eloquent. It is the Golden Gate. You see, if you will for a moment imagine this bay, you see, without the bridge, it will be a beautiful bay, as there are hundreds of them, you know, all along the Pacific coast. But once the bridge has been put there, it makes it unique. Everybody understand, you know, the relation between nature and artificial work of the engineers, and it makes uh, one of the most uh, outstanding works of the 20th century, and probably also the art of the 20th century will be even a little bit poorer without the Golden Gate. Yeah, it's almost a perfect bridge. It's uh, certainly one of the most beautiful bridges <laughs> ever done. <laughs> what's the? What's, we'll get to this later. But of all the bridges you have done, does one sort of stand out for you? Does one have more? Is it was it the first one or? I, I, well, you see, there is a bridge that I personally think it is. It was a, a kind of, in, not because the span, but because the signification, a kind of heroic, heroic bridge, and it was the Alamillo Bridge in Seville for the Expo '92. Yeah, right, right. 
which it is uh, unique in its character with with this uh, mast uh, you see and the wires and, and the deck who you may maybe associate it to a harp or something like that but it's also in itself not only because symbolically it's very strong, but also statically yeah. is very well yeah. uh, justified. You couldn't have designed those bridges without your engineering. Well, this is, I think, uh, mm, uh, effectively, you see, the engineering uh, uh, point of view is another look to the same thing, which it is the art of construction. So the architects may maybe approach it from an optic, the engineers approach it to an optic, but the subject is the same. And effectively, you see, in the uh, in a bridge, you see, you have many things who has deep, who are deeply related to the material nature of the bridge. You know how you do those spans, how the statical, uh, the arcs or or the the wires works and so on. So there is certainly uh, the need uh, to have deep knowledge in engineering to approach the problem of bridges. Yeah, they represent what to you? Well, you see, uh, also <laughs> I think it is uh, personally. I think. Uh, bridges are something very moving, you know, to, to go across a difficulty, particularly here in New York, you see, it. you recognize that Manhattan yeah. is an yeah. island because the wonderful bridges around. Yeah. Some of them, they are, if you look at the Brooklyn Bridge, is, is Another outstanding, statement. you see, yes, with the, with the pedestrian walkway in the center, with all those cables, and, and some of them are uh, uh, majestuous, like the, the uh, George Washington Bridge, and uh, in a way, you see, you can very much associate yourself to bridges, and they are important events. Mm -hmm. You once said something like, ideal is the works of engineering inspired by the soul of an artist. Yes, it could be like that. This is yeah. a good definition. Yes, yeah. it could be like that. When many people have come here on this program and talked about architecture, yeah. And some have talked about art, you know, and and some of them believe that architecture is art. Yes. Uh, some of them believe that architecture is not art because it has function. Yeah. 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 Well, myself, I think if you do the contraposition, for example, between as a plastic art, you know, the contraposition between architecture and sculpture. Effectively, the sculpture, you know, the, who, when it is working, you know, it can be much freer because it can work in a very, um, in a, with a very high sense of abstraction, just following the, the, the rules of the material, you know, if it is cutting stone or steel, but he's much freer than an architect. An architect has to follow function, you see, and has to do that the building is useful, and it has to produce staircases, and it has to produce uh, toilets, and it has to produce entrances and rooms and facades. You, so, so you are the whole time constrained by limitation. So there is no doubt that, that under an abstract point of view, you see, the rule of the sculpture is much more, it has a big freedom in itself. On the other side, you see, sculpture is superior in the scale because uh, you can penetrate it, because you can go in, you know. Yeah. And sculptures like Moore, Chilida, Dubuffet, and others, you know, they have been just mm -hmm. dreaming to do sculptures who involve you, you know, in which you can go in. Architects can do that. So when you go into, into a cathedral, or when you go into a beautiful lobby, or when you, and then they are a, a beautiful train station. Yes, a beautiful <laughs> train station, and you feel that. <laughs> when you, people have said to me that that there is a there is a Calatrava look. Look. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Is there one for I you in your head, in your mind, a mm -hmm. look that says? This is the creation yeah. of Santiago Calatrava. I mean, you see, it may maybe be. You know, what I can uh, tell you about that, it is that, as I defined before, the problem between architects and, and uh, sculptures is a matter of freedom. I understood very early that architecture, you can project yourself in your work. As an artist, you understand, as a painter, you see, he, your personality, when you look painting of Picasso, you see it is Picasso, and Picasso wants to tell you something about himself, his life, or whatever. An architect is also capable to do that. It's maybe a more um, um, low motion music, you understand what I mean? Yeah. It's a more quiet, more intimate music. It's not so expressive, you know, as you can do as a painter, but still, you know, you can project yourself. This may maybe generate a kind of look. Yeah. You seek inspiration in nature. Yes. How so? How? You see, uh, I understand um, 
our approach to nat nature and our vision of nature is crucial, you know, in our epoch. You see our cities growing, you know, occupating landscapes. You see, you see the impact of the buildings, you know, roads, uh, canals, bridges, and whatever. In the, it's very important, you know, we are in a moment of rethinking our relation to nature. At the other side, nature is probably the most wonderful, the most uh, natural, natural school, you know, to learn forms, shapes. We are also part of the nature. Our hands are part yeah, of the nature, yeah. our eyes, our mouth. We are dead. We are with self as natural. But, and that influences your architecture? Well, you see, it's at least a philosophical school to follow, yeah. you understand, in which you recognize, you know, that in its artificiality, you see, there are many, uh, in its uh, artificiality and independence of the nature, also architecture can reflect very much, you see, the nature. You always, I mean, there is, there is present in some of your recent things, certainly, wings. Yes, mm. yes, yes. Nature, wings. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Movement also yes, inspires yes. you. Yes. How so? Um, you see, <clears throat> what is the spirit of our time? If you want to read it also through technical achievement, you will see that many of the things in our surrounding are moving cars, aeroplanes, flying, you see, and mm -hmm. things like that. How to reflect that in architecture? If you um, go a little bit closer to those things, you will see that many of those technical achievements can be easy to incorporate in our architecture. So making it contemporary, making it also part of our time and expressions of our uh, uh, everyday life. And so I thought that during uh, uh, centuries and millenniums, people understood architecture as something static. But in the fact, architecture changed. When the sun moves around, you see the shadows, the day, the night, the buildings change. So they have, there is a movement, a kind of life in the building. And today, it is possible to express that even, you see, in major events. Like, for example, you know, a building who opens and becomes like wings, you see, or, or doors and gates who opens and reflects in the mirrors in the water and makes uh, um, and emphasize not only the functional needs of the building in order to, uh, to, to be sun protected or whatever, but also emphasize this metamorphical mm -hmm. uh, uh, character, you see, that the architecture can have. You have a sketch pad there. We may come yeah. to that in a moment. I yeah. want to sort of turn now as we talk to, and, and you may help me illustrate things by sketches. This is the first project in America, yeah. the Milwaukee Art Museum. Aero Saren and the great architect uh, had originally built the original, yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What we'll see, obviously, what is part of your extension is so clear there. Uh, but talk about this for me, and, and what, in the context of what we've said about nature and movement, yeah. and 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 what it is that that this represents for you in the Milwaukee Art Museum yeah. extension. Yes. First of all, and in a very brief way, I would like to speak about the human context. I uh, has it has been during five years the yeah. only project in the United States in which I dedicate all my energies, yeah. and I went in the fact to Milwaukee something like forty times in yeah. five years. So. This permits me also to understand very well the place, you know, the nature of the place, the city, yeah. you see. And so, as you see, I create a pavilion, one block apart of the existing pavilion of Sarinen. In a way, in a complementary way, you see, if the Sarinen building is uh, brown and right, a little right, bit dark, right. I make a light and uh, not, uh, you see, no, no uh, metallic and glass uh, building with those wings who can open and close. And of course, I have to say also that I was privileged to work in such a beautiful place, you see, in front of the lake, yes. very close to the lake. But the, way, but, but the, the signature <coughs> thing here, I mean, you walk into a space yes, yes. Uh, that, that identifies... Yes, in the fact, you see, you have uh, uh, the situation of the link of the, the museum and the, and the city through a bridge. Yes, <laughs> and then also uh, you see the link of the museum with the existing pavilion of Sarinen and right. the creation of a plaza, which right. didn't exist before, so plaza, also a very urban statement, and then working in the central space who we wanted to give a very dramatic character, you see, so yeah. it dignified the space, you see, as, uh, 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 as a multi-proposal space, but also with a, um, a very high architectural and light quality inside, with also taking advantage of the views, you see the big openings versus the lake, and also the lateral openings into the terraces, and articulating that with a single element, which it is this wing that you see there, 
who can open and close. The fact of opening it slowly, slowly, and closing it keeps a dynamic character and transforms the building in a, in a kind of urban sculpture, yeah. you see, at the end of the Wisconsin Avenue. Would you have had the capacity to design this uh, if you were not trained in engineering? Uh, because you could obviously design a vision yes. for something and go to an engineer and say, will yes. this work and how will this work? But if you're an engineer, in addition, yes. Yes, you yes. have an additional element that you can, I would think, expand your creativity, yes? Yes, 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 yes. And a knowledge of materials. Yes. I think certainly, you see, the knowledge of materials and the knowledge of mechanism and the knowledge of mechanics helps you a lot in this process because it becomes part of yourself and of your thoughts and you can make natural references and at the same time implement them in terms of mechanical processes. Uh, 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 processes and uh, because that I think it is so interesting you know to uh, to be well trained as an engineer you know yes. being an architect and um, I think certainly uh, the building itself want to be an expression of this what you can do with the language of the engineering to the service of an architecture let me take a look I'm just going to do a couple of things here I'm going to switch down to some upcoming projects and then we'll come back uh, and talk about growing up in Valencia and also about uh, the role of bridges and railroad stations uh, in this ra rather remarkable career. But if we can switch forward uh, and take a look at some of the things that are coming up in Santiago's career. What's this? Yes, this is the mm -hmm. Olympic ring for right. Athens. Now yes. This is underway for the 2000... 2004. Four. So, yeah. and w so how far along are you on this? Yes, we have concluded the project and we are now getting for tender. We are concluding the tender process. Right. And, and, and tell me about this. What inspires you <coughs> about this? Yes, you see, first of all, I um, um, have to say that Athens uh, and the fact that the Olympics goes back to Athens is the uh, you know, also the moment, you know, to rethink a little bit how the Olympics could be presented and we thought we decide that we wanted to emphasize uh, uh, the fact of creating beautiful public spaces, also using trees and water as an element, but also doing artificial structures like uh, the Agora, like the roofs of the stadiums and the Velodrome in order to emphasize also the technical aspect, aspect right. of the project. And, what you are seeing here, Central Plaza, with a capacity of almost 300,000 persons. Then you see also the arcs in the back, you see the arcs of the stadium. And then in the front, you see the velodrome, the different entrances, trying to create a global image of the overall uh, The next one that, that uh, has not begun work yet, although I think they've ex you, you, you can tell me what status you are. This is the Christ-like Cathedral for the Roman Catholic Diocese of Oakland, yeah. California. Again, we see some connection in my, at least my visual uh, resonance with Milwaukee. Yes, because you see, I try uh, from one project to another, you see they are all steps in a, yeah. uh, steps forward, I hope, you see, yeah. in, a, in, a, in a way. And in the fact, uh, you see, I am introducing here also a movable structure. You see, the original idea was to use the hand, you know, hands right. in this position. So this is, you see, go ahead. Yes, yes and, and creating a space, you see, for prey and, and for gathering. And uh, you see, as my hands can open, not the whole roof, but the sun screen of the roof, you know, will permit the light goes in. So that uh, you can use a glass roof over there and have uh, different kinds of light and also different kinds of quality of light inside. And this is the result of it. So the idea is very simple. It is like my hands in this. Uh, and then you see, if I open my hands, you see, I uh, yeah. signify also a verticality of the space. To, to heaven. Yes. 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 Okay, the next one is uh, the Cathedral. Of, this is an addition that's going to take place later. Cathedral of St. John the Divine here in Manhattan. I mean, there is the great Cathedral of St. John the Divine, and, and what you're going to see there is the middle part. Go yes, ahead. Yes, exactly. This is a project on which I, uh, I like very much, and personally was the very first project I has done. Uh, for uh, it was uh, 10 years old, and the idea here was um, to conclude the transept, the, 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 the transversal nave of the cathedral with um, um, a convenient architecture, and then also to roof the whole cathedral, to roof the whole cathedral and create a an spy, and this uh, using a very transparent, transparent structure, you see, yeah. with glass and metal, so that in the night the whole roof and the spy itself can be enlightened. Yes. You understand? And even people can go into the roof of the cathedral, who usually is not, uh, they are not accessible. And the interesting thing it is that the f 
roofs, they follow the cross form of the cathedral itself. Mm -hmm. So that mm, then you have the symbol of the cross, you know, who ordinate the architecture of the cathedral is also, you can also ah. recognize it. Yes. The, uh, with the two central towers, you can recognize it in this roof, who is again, you know, as a monument to the nature, is a garden. Yeah. So it will be uh, trees will be planted here up in the top, you see, and uh, it will be a place, you see, of let's yeah. say visit and yeah, the, the garden is where in the in the roof in you the see? roof. That's yeah. right. Oh, I see. Because yes, uh, yes, the yes, roof, yes. Uh, you know, being in glass and metal, becomes a kind of greenhouse. Ah, you understand? Yes. And it is beautiful also as a symbol because it's bringing. Uh, you know, waking up, you see, again, you know, the feeling that there is a secret uh, character in the nature, isn't it? Yeah. And, uh, the, there is, as, as the romantic says in the 19th century, the nature is a temple, you know, in a way, you know. Take a look at the next one. This is uh, the Opera House uh, in the Canary Islands. It, ah, mm. there. Yes. Tell me about this. Well, you see, I, uh, uh, being someone who, uh, who loves music, uh, uh, almost as much as architecture. You see, I was. Uh, uh, this was the first commission for a, m a building related to the music, and I have to say, uh, it is built in Tenerife in a very beautiful site, close to the sea, close to the Atlantic. You see, and and I mean, close means let's say 200 feet apart. You know, yeah, we are yeah, just. Uh, yeah. And uh, you see, there is this idea of a big wa uh, wave of water. You right. see, yeah, yes. wave of water. Water, yes, yes covering the building. And uh, yeah. they are those shells of concrete, yeah. and the light is getting tangentially to the central, um, uh, the central uh, element who yeah. uh, who contains the main auditorium. Now, obviously, clients hire you because they want this, yeah. but are they surprised by the drama of it when you present it to them? I mean, no, I, I think it is. This is uh, you see. I mean, everybody, uh, uh, when you have a good client, each one, has, uh, you see, you have your job, the client has his job, and, and uh, the, 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 the first vision, you see, belongs to the client. I mean, uh, as you say, I want to have uh, a beautiful building, but I want to have also a building very expressive, let's say. So I go to maybe to Calatrava or to another architect. So in the fact, you see, if you look, it is impossible to get a, a good building without a good client right. because the first vision is not from the architect. The architect is following the vision of the client. Yes. You understand? It and is taking uh, the, the, the rule. From the, client. the rule of the architect is makes that this flame of the client, you know, burns more. You understand what I mean? Yeah. And improves. You understand? Uh, and this is uh, a bit what happens here. You know, I and uh, you see when you work in a place like uh, Tenerife, Santa Cruz, you right. know, small. Province city in the in Canary a, Islands, right? Yes, in, uh, uh, and you have uh, you understand the need of these people to have something special. Now, what did they say to you? I mean, in other words, how did they communicate what they wanted? They didn't say, "Give me a wave that looks like it's coming over my opera house." They yes. said, "What?" Well, they, you see, first of all, uh, you recognize their enthusiasm for music because they have a very good yeah. orchestra. And you know, uh, they have also, uh, uh, and you hear the performances of this orchestra, you see also solists, uh, you know, uh, playing. I was in a concert of, with Misha Maeshki yeah. playing the uh, cello, wonderful cello concert. Right. And so then you understand there is a lot of consistent, you know, of, uh, uh, and then you see also they want to reflect the time, you know, of enthusiasm and opening that they yeah. are living in, in the new democratic Spain, because this is a project who has now something like 10 years old, you know, and we are concluding now. And it's, it, there are many things who convey and shows you, you know, the capacity of the client to support something, and then you make him propositions, and he identifies with those. Here's what's interesting about you. I mean, you grew up in a very old country yes. in Spain, in Valencia. Yes. Uh, your father was not an architect. No, my father, no, no. What did he do? Well, he was uh, um, he was a businessman yeah. with, um, uh, uh, and he used to export the only thing at the time that it was exportable, uh, and it was fruits, yeah. uh, oranges, uh, yes, oranges, yeah. oranges, yeah. yes. And, and did you you would walk around with him, yeah, yeah and you'd see the great arcs of, yes. Well, Valencia. there was a, a kind of uh, there is still today uh, uh, the stock exchange uh, place you see for agricultural products, and it is one of the most wonderful. Uh, halls, uh, Gothic, Gothic halls, civil Gothic halls, I think in Europe. And I went there, you know, as a kid with my father, maybe he has had the hope I will yeah. go <laughs> behind his business, step. Yes. And then I saw this wonderful thing and I say I want to become <laughs> an architect. <laughs> Is it, did that did it? Well, it was it, certainly, it was I think, uh, still today, it was the beginning. And still today, I think one of the 
um, greatest impression, you know, of this clarity and at the same time of this imagination, this fantasy of this building done in stone, you know, it's yeah. wonderful. Now, what work. did it look like? Show me what it looked like. Yes, yeah. you see, it is, uh, in a way, you see, in plan, it's very simple. The plan of the building is a rectangular and it has, you see, nine columns at the interior. You see, And uh, the columns, however, they are very particular. They are uh, they descend, maybe uh, making helicoids, and then they expand into the room like palms. So when you see all together, you know, yeah. it looks like you are uh, you will be in a palm forest. In a forest. In a forest of yeah. palms. And this know, was built when. This was built something like, uh, let's say, 600 years ago. 600 years ago. Six, so. 600 years ago. And then it so has 1400 or something like that. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, and it has very beautiful gardens also. There is a small garden here, very intimate, very beautiful. Yeah. There is another addition here on the side, but this is posterior. It has been done later. Yeah. Then you went to France to study. Yes. B b inspired by what? Well, you see, France has been for, uh, uh, traditionally, you know, or uh, next uh, uh, country to Europe, you understand? And uh, if you look, uh, many people in Spain, as Picasso has done, you right, know, Miro, right. and many others, you know, went to Paris. other generations went to Paris. And you, still, for, for my generation and for myself, it was a very attractive place and also a wonderful country. Now, were you thinking artist then, or were you thinking architecture? I was thinking... You know, just I was thinking as a person with yeah, I don't know, when Paris, I started yeah. getting, you know, I was, <laughs> when I went to Paris, I was I think 16 years old. You know, I was thinking just. Yeah. Then you went back to Valencia. Yeah. Yeah. What was the first project for you? The first yes. substantial yes, project. Yes. Yes. Well, this uh, you see, after Valencia, I went to uh, to Zurich and I studied civil engineer at the Polytechnicum yes. in in, uh, in uh, Zurich and. Uh, Which is where you live now. Uh, yes, part. and uh, uh, you see, m after having finished my PhD degree, uh, uh, the studies of engineering and PhD, I uh, take I took part in a competition for the second railway station in Zurich, and I was lucky to get uh, uh, appointed as the architect and also as the engineer, yeah. and this was uh, uh, the basis of my office in Zurich, who uh, went from one person into more than 30 persons. Yeah. The Staffelon, Stapel, how did you say that? How, what was the name Stapel of the railroad? Stapelhofen. Stapelhofen yes, railroad yes, station. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. And what's the challenge of doing, because you've done a number of them, of radios, of, of railroad stations? Of transit yes, stations. I think you see uh, they are a little Berlin, bit similar. Leon, uh, and yes, other places. In, in a way they are similar to bridges, you know, because they are places of passage. You understand? Yeah. So a lot of people arrive, get across. And you see, if you think thousands of people arrive to these places every day, you see, and mm, it is a place that um, you can trade with a lot of dignity. And yeah. they are also the gates to the city, you know, and mm. there is also a place, you know, of exchange and so, so they have a great, great potential, you know, to get, if you think, for example, that maybe in a museum, you know, goes half a million um, persons uh, a year and mm. in, in a station, you know, you get half a million in one week, yes. you understand? It means, you see, they are uh, important places. You so know, what do you want to do there, then? You want, you, uh, so first of all, you say it's an important place. Yes. Secondly, you're going to see there's a lot of movement coming in and yes. out of here. Yes. So what does, that di what does that dictate to you as an architect? Yes, it keeps, uh, you know, it makes me very much aware about uh, the fact that the stations can regenerate also the city or can give a, a lot of character to the city in this place. Mm. If you think our cities has grown and grown and the opportunity making an, uh, a new station or transforming an existing station is also the opportunity to give a whole new character to the area around. Yeah, yeah. So they are also very efficient instrument in terms of changing the life and influencing the neighborhood. And on the other side, they can be also wonderful buildings because, you know, as the bridges, you know, trains and they are all objects of our dream and our childhood, you know, and, and yeah. things like that, you know, they, they, they also the dream of, of um, getting, you know, with a train somewhere else, visiting Italy, let's say, or something like One that. One of the interesting things that is being discussed here in New York is that the opportunity, because of, tra of, of what happened, uh, to build a memorial at, at Ground Zero, yes. um, the transit, the people who come into that central zone, <coughs> you know, it will probably be imperative that they design something 
that it captures your kind of imagination so the people coming up to that site you know will be will see something beautiful as they as they exit yes. the transit yes mm -hmm. well i think it is um you see i think i like very much this idea as far as uh, you see there is no better homage you see to the past and to the circumstances of it that to make conscience, you know, with a lot of life, with the everyday life, you know, yeah. of those people coming there, you know, that life is going ahead. So yeah. I think just as, a, as an idea, it's a wonderful idea, you see, yeah. that you can bring, let's say, half a million persons there who will maybe for a short moment remember, you know, this place. So they will, you see, it's a very beautiful way, you understand? Also because it, it will become a destination, but you know, in a more soft way. You can even go somewhere else, you understand what yes. I mean? Or, or yeah. even it gives also, you know, it comes in my mind that it gives also a universal uh, uh, term in terms that you can arrive from all the country through the train to this place, you understand yeah, what I, I mean? Do. So, I, I mean, it is a lot of, uh, a lot of symbolism, you know, yeah. in that. I think it's a very beautiful idea. I'm, I'm also, I want to switch now back to Milwaukee for a second in terms of this idea. What did you do to the garage there? Can you do something yes. special to the garage in there? Because we don't yes. think of garages as a place of yes. beauty yes. Or, yes. or a place of, of, of welcome. They're yes. just there. You see, uh, if you take all the questions that you are putting, we are speaking on bridges, we are speaking on stations, and now we are speaking on garage. Yes. And you will see there is something common in my intention. It is to wake up the attention of people that bridges can be wonderful. They was also wonderful. Yeah. You understand that yeah. stations can be wonderful. They can yeah. be the most beautiful buildings. They was like that. Yeah. Remember Pennsylvania, Penn Station here in, in, in oh, New York. Yeah. Now you see what I want uh, to tell you. It is garages. also garage can be wonderful places. Yeah. Because imagine you can do the most beautiful lobby, the yeah. most beautiful internet. But many people, particularly in Milwaukee, which it is a city which many people moves with cars, you see, they arrive, the major part of them, into a museum, which it is a piece of art, through a garage. And I thought this is a good place, you know, to express, uh, to express quality. Yeah, and, and bring some light down. And, 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 exactly. And, yeah. and so, uh, as you say, you know, bringing light inside, you see, making it architecturally uh, accessible and beautiful so that your first, uh, first experience in the building, the first experience of quality happens in the garage. I'll we'll talk more about bridges, but let's take a look at the next slide. This is the Lyon uh, airport. Again, you see, there is a look that you do have. I mean, I think I could show these buildings uh, to someone, certainly this airport and, and Milwaukee and Oakland and, uh, and Canary Island. <coughs> there is something there that says you. You know that, yes? Yeah. Yeah, all right, but well, tell me about this station. Well, here... This um, is at Lyon? Uh, yes, this is uh, Lyon Saint-Exupéry. It's close to the airport right. and it is a pure uh, high-speed railway station. Yeah. And uh, um, it has uh, this um, uh, look, you see, with the central element, very powerful, and the two wings, who are very long, they are almost, let's say, 1,500 feet altogether, the whole station uh, uh, in length. You see, um, uh, they are shallow in order that in the landscape, when you look from far away, you see the central element as a very powerf powerful sculptural element, and the two wings, they are a bit shallow. It is built in concrete and steel, and it has this uh, glazed uh, central hall that you are seeing. All right, then the next thing we're going to see goes back to Valencia. I want to talk more about your own. Uh, this is the Valencia Opera House yes, again. Yes. This is all part of the City of Arts and Sciences in Valencia. How, yes. how large a city is Valencia? Well, Valencia is a city, uh, the city itself has 700,000, 750,000 inhabitants. Mm -hmm. And the metropolitan area makes maybe 1.3 million. And this whole area is covering, the City of, of Arts and Sciences is covering how much? Well, it is 1.5 miles long by, let's say, one quarter of a mile uh, yeah. wide. And let's see the next thing, City of Science and Planet City of Science Planetarium. Okay. Mm. How many bridges have you designed in Valencia? I, in Valencia, I have designed uh, four bridges. Four bridges. Four bridges. Yeah. And do they have a common characteristic? No, I, in the case of Valencia, science they was has been put in different places, and well, not it's a town of many bridges, 20, yeah. 30 bridges, huh? Uh, well, the whole I has designed more than sixty bridges. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, but uh, uh, in Valencia, you see there is one who is in concrete, very shallow bridge. Then there is an arc, there is a cable stair bridge, and there is a double arc in steel. 
This is the first one. The first, the first yeah. one. Where is that? And it, it, is, uh, it was in a in neighborhood uh, co uh, clo uh, of uh, out, a little bit outside of Barcelona. Yeah. And uh, linking two important streets, who has been not, um, uh, you know, with the, without any linkage until the moment. And it was, uh, let's say, an important event for the neighbors, but also symbolically for the city because it was the first uh, Finnish building for the Olympics. Yeah, you 92. did in '92. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Did politics of Spain affect you in terms of your development? I mean, did it give you ideas that are part of who you are and therefore? Yes, certainly. You see, uh, I, I was born in 51. Right. And I spent all, uh, you see, until I was 23 living in Spain. And of course, you see, the, as everybody knows, you see, Spain was in an authority, under the authoritarian right. regime of General Franco at the time. And then I was also part, I was lucky, you know, to see my country, you know, grow into the, uh, democracy, you know. Yeah. And this was something unbelievable. This is something, you know, it, it is an experience, you know, who emphasize uh, and, and make unmistakable, you know, in your mind the qualities, you know, the, qual the difference of quality and how positive and how much a democracy has brought into our country. And many of those buildings, particularly the early ones, was also taken over by my colleagues and uh, the people who helped also with a lot of enthusiasm, nevertheless, because they w the country was doing the first step, you know, in the new identity that he has today. Yeah. What D take a look at a couple more bridges. One is in Seville and the other is in Bilbao. This is Seville. Yes. yes? Yes. Tell me about that. That's beautiful. Well, I think this is, uh, in my opinion, uh, the, the uh, a bridge uh, 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 that I personally like very much. Yeah. Nevertheless, because I like also very much Seville, who is very, uh, you know, is a city who has this, what we call El Duende, you know, with this magic thing, you know, who just fascinate you. When you go to Seville, you see it's not a common city, you know, it is the perfume or whatever. And uh, so it was, I was very much motivated to do something who is technically pure, technically express, you know, a very pure, almost an elementary equation, minimal equation of the way to do a bridge. And on the other side, something who symbolically can be associated to other things like a heart yeah. or like a mast or whatever. All right. I think last is the bridge in Bilbao. Let's take a look at this. This is. Yes, this, uh, this is the model of the bridge. Also there, you see, um, in a very short span uh, of uh, m something like, uh, uh, let's say 200 feet, you see, I has had to do this crossing. And again, you see, uh, uh, even if the span is very modest, but the fact of the way getting up and then getting across, coming down, and also the school, to, the, the, the fact of, and start to supporting the bridge, offering it, you know, having it almost, you know, in the air yeah. like that, you know, porting yeah. it, you see, this makes, you see, uh, this, this makes, you see, the association of the bridge, you see, in, in front of the people, you know, looking at right, it as right. a kind of sculpture or as a kind of, uh, and then also the fact of getting inside the cables, you see. So it has to very much to do with the philosophy of some people like Naum Gabo and other sculptors, you see, we, who use right, arcs, right, wires, right, and right. this kind of um, multiple forms, you know, through the vibration of the arcs. And uh, so there is, uh, in my opinion, is a, a nice example of this, what you can do in a small scale, but still can be significant for the place and for the city. I know that you've been inspired by Picasso, and I know <coughs> you're inspired by, uh, and you like Frank Gehry and Richard Meyer, at least in terms of things that I've read about you. But there's clear some link with Eros hmm. okay, So all of us in New York know what the TWA building yeah. means. Yes, 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 yes. You know, and you just see that sweep, yeah, yeah, and you yeah. think of, did he influence you? Very much, you see, because, uh, you see, there is uh, something you see in, in his uh, something unique in the work of uh, Saharinen, isn't it? Something unique. Sometimes it's very intimate, uh, as in the chapel of uh, um, the MIT. You know, yes. he has this tiny, tiny chapel. You see, and sometimes it's, um, uh, you see, uh, it's unbelievable precise in order to express the idea of flying. You know, like in the TW terminal, right. a yeah. terminal That's in exactly uh, the Kennedy what, Airport, yeah. and sometimes, you know, he has done. Um, you know, those kind of uh, uh, buildings who, in my opinion, all of them, they are, um, let's say, very much, uh, you, you, you see the quality of the artist because you feel, you feel that there is a lot of feeling put, it, put behind the building. There are two things that are sort of all, uh, hovering above the surface of architecture today. One is this notion. Um, 
that all architects want to create museums. Yeah. Uh, and that museums have become more known for their architecture than the art that is within. I mean, was this idea at all part of where you were when you thought about the Milwaukee Museum? Even though it was an addition to the work that Saren had already done. Yeah, of course, you see, to do a museum today, you know, in our time is, a, is always a challenge because you, are, you get confronted to events, you know, wonderful events like, uh, like uh, Bilbao, you, yeah. know, for, you know, or Pay, you see, in the yeah. Louvre, or even a very important museum is Pay in the National Gallery in Washington, yes, right. where probably um, it may maybe be, uh, you know, one of the very early buildings who yeah. show us, you know, that museums were moving on, you know, in something different. The fact of uh, the books are sort of off to the, I mean the paintings are off to the side. I mean you know there's you come in there and there's this sort of spectacular opening. Yes, yes. And the art somewhere else. Yes, but you see the fact is this. You see the museums has permitted, among many other things, has permitted that we can confront it architecture and art, and maybe in the eyes of many people became evident that architecture can be an art. You know. You understand? Yeah. It is because putting together... Architecture you know, can be art. Art, exactly. Yeah. exactly. And the this other is, in, in my opinion, something important that yeah. they are doing. In part, to do that, to, to, make yeah. ar to make architecture art and to make the building itself art. Yeah. Yes. art. Yes. 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 You, there's no question in your mind that you believe architecture is, can be, yes. art. Yes, I, I think you know, so. It can I, add beauty yes, yes, as yes, an yes. element of it. Yes, yes. That architecture, I, I even, I am combined, architecture is... I don't want to say the major of all the arts, but it's the summa artis, you know, mm -hmm. is the addition of all the arts. Yeah, because they bring so many things into it. Yes, yeah. yes. There's an interesting thing, too, that happens if you find the right architect in the right building. And I think this happened in Milwaukee, but if it's wrong, my friends in Milwaukee will have to forgive me. It is that a great building can drive fundraising. In other words, you can start with a great building and therefore people will feel so so proud of what is to be yeah, 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 yeah. that it perform it, it ignites the drive to raise money to create it yeah you see i think it is uh, one of the wonderful parts of the experience of milwaukee was to discover that all those buildings in the united states gets paid by fundraising yes <laughs> i mean it is something that in europe you are not accustomed because they are uh, you know paid, paid by, by the city uh, uh, yes by, by the city by or the public money yeah uh, uh, and uh, this was uh, in my opinion something who has given to this experience in milwaukee even a major significance because i saw people coming looking you see for the interesting uh, for the building and then i asked myself what is at the end, you see the deepest sense of this gesture, you know, of, and I got to the conclusion that it is exactly that, who makes the building a monument, because monument comes from the Latin mementum, who means to the memory. So <laughs> what you do when you do a building who is outstanding is to a monument, who means you do something for the memory of the time in which this building was built. So when we see the Pantheon in Rome, we think how it's great the It's a memory of the time that it was exactly, built. Exactly, exactly. And people recognize that in a very, uh, um, in a very direct way, and I think you know this effort, you know, getting money from people, you know, to do something exceptional for a community. I think is is uh, mm. one of the most outstanding and mm. great things I have. Seen. I mentioned Picasso and and your admiration for him, yes. and I think I read somewhere that you said that he constantly renewed himself. That the great challenge is to live in in a profession in a way uh, that to live in your profession like an artist, like a painter, where you were prepared to make a leap of death in terms of risk yeah, and yeah, surprise yeah. yourself. Yes, Tell yeah. me what you were thinking about when you said yes, something you see, like that. I, I think, you know, for uh, as an Hispanian, you see, the yeah. personality of Picasso, I think for my generation even, and I suppose even for the next generation, is so big that we cannot, we, we, we are not prepared to get confronted, you understand? We can maybe look back now to fellows like Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, right, and right, have right. a little bit yeah, of exactly. Picasso is even too early. And you see, also it surprised me in Picasso that he was a very hard worker. And he used to work but for Why does that surprise you? Because, because I've never known greatness see, in which yeah, the person because, behind greatness see, wasn't a hard uh, you worker. See, because he was also a, a, a man, you see, who understood that it is necessary an unbelievable effort, you know, to achieve something outstanding, you see. Yeah. And uh, 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 he say, je ne cherche pas, je trouve. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't, I am not doing research, I am just finding things, you understand? Yeah. And, and uh, uh, this means, you see, an attitude of someone who uh, uh, 
I mean, it's a real attitude of an artist. I mean, an artist is a man who works, you know, and works very patiently and patiently and paints and look for its subjects and the painting became autobiographic. He projects himself, he projects his life, he projects everything, you see, and he can do from time to time. Uh, you see this kind of work who moves uh, everybody like the Guernica or all that. You feel like you're constantly taking risk? Yes, you see, when you want to do something very good, very, very good, and you want to go to the top, risk is not a hindrance. You understand? Risk is something that belongs to the life. Yeah. If, you, the, if you say that, I mean, I, help me understand how you feel about that. Risk is essential, uh, A, for growth, and B for high achievement. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Imagine, particularly if you uh, think I'm a musician, you can see it very well. You know, a solid who has to play uh, something. You know, the risk of making an error, you know, is not a hindrance. You understand what I mean? It is the the the, the desire to to uh, to conclude something in in, in the frame of a, uh, of the perfection who deserves to the art that you are serving. How do you think? you have changed in, in the most important way, say over the last five years. How have you, in your sense of art and architecture and, and what you want to do and where you're going and what new ideas you have encompassed? You know, what's been the driving element of change within you? You see, first of all, you know, after having practiced architecture in 20 years, I, I, uh, I go to the conclusion that uh, I am in the right profession. <laughs> say, I like it. Yeah. And uh, also, I, I started even the process of understanding how mysterious and how wonderful it is the fact that you can, in any circumstance, do architecture. So architecture is even goes beyond, you know, technique. Architecture goes beyond drawing. Architectures goes, you see, architecture is, even it goes beyond material, you know, it's not the fact of a building is done in concrete and steel alone, you know, or uh, stone and steel, it's much more than that, it is this kind of aura, you see, who, who um, and uh, you see the fact of, you see, as you can maybe feel looking at the Kimball Art Museum of Louis Kahn. Right. Who I think is one of the great masterpieces, you know, small, tiny, but it's a great lecture. Fort Worth, Texas. Yes, exactly. You can, you can see that, you see, and this um, uh, goal, you know, to approach a little bit more my work in that direction is for me, you know, a, a great motivation. Why is the Kimball a, a, a masterpiece for you? You see, first of all, because it's so simple, yes. in a way, you see. And on the other side, because it fulfill, it is a, 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 the whole museum is a, is a single architectural event. When you, uh, you see, it, when you visit the Kimball, may, maybe take you one hour, two hours, or three hours, then after a while you recognize you have seen it in one second. You understand? So the whole building, the whole idea condensed into a feeling of I have been experiencing a great architecture. I wonder this thought too. Uh, uh, as we look, you've mentioned the power, uh, you've mentioned Greece and Spain and Paris and and all and, and all the places you're going. If in the end there is more in common with great architecture than there is difference, you know, and that that notwithstanding change in materials and not with notwithstanding. Uh, the use of computer technology, which I don't think you use. Do you much or not? Personally, not. We no. use in my office. Yeah, but, but you, in terms of you, yourself, don't no, use it much. I use very much. You, you, draw, you draw because yeah, yeah, of the artistic yeah, yeah, you know, yes, yes, yes. training you've had or artistic uh, instincts and talent you have. But in the end, I wonder if the great architecture, whether it's a great cathedral or the Parthenon, or which you look to for inspiration, or the things that you saw, the arcs, in Valencia or the Central yes. Market in Valencia yes. and, and what has touched you in terms of nature. Nature's not new. Birds flying is not new. Yes. So all of those things have influenced probably great architecture throughout the history of civilization. So there is more, there is as much in constancy in greatness as there is in change. Yes, well, I think, you see, uh, or say, the looking at the nature, you see, as an item, you see, uh, uh, um, you see, it, it is enough that you look at the, uh, let's say, it is enough if you draw an apple, let's say, yeah. you see, looking at an apple, you draw an apple, and thi this thing don't belongs anymore to the nature, you understand, it yeah. is a creation of, uh, of your mind, and uh, you understand, yeah. and this is the beauty of approaching the nature, you see, you are not, 
making things mimetic or trying to imitate the nature. The nature is always better and beautiful, you see, and uh, if you, uh, I mean, a flower, whatever you draw, you see. But the fact it is, you see, this mechanism that we have in ourselves to observe something, translate it, you see, and, crea and, and, and make a, and create an artificial event, you know, who is uh, close to the nature, it is a faculty that we have in our mind and in our ability, you understand? Yeah. And this, projecting it, you know, into buildings and projecting it in parts of the building or even projecting it, which it is also <coughs> in the overall tissue of the building, you know, with the organicity, how things move inside, you know, how the parts belong to each other, which you recognize like in the nature, that a small part of the building is enough to recognize the whole building, you know. When I go to the British Museum and I saw the Parthenon sculptures, you see, right. I saw the, I see the whole building, you understand what I mean? I say, why those marbles are not in Athens, you know? This, you see, they belong so intimately, you know, to the building. They, you see, even it's, uh, people cannot understand those things as a sculpture, they are part, uh, essential parts of the building, because architecture, as you uh, saw, uh, say before, about the Parthenon is that, you yeah. see, the, the architecture is a whole thing, it's a whole event. <clears throat> in terms of the future, you know, what is it you most hope to achieve? Yes, I think, you see, um, there is a, a kind of, uh, uh, let's say, there is, um, uh, personally, you see, I, I would very much like uh, uh, to, um, I, one of the fascinating things in a personal way who uh, satisfies me very much in a personal way has been the exchange, you know, with people, for example, the Milwaukee experience or uh, the Oakland experience or many other experiences that we are having in Europe. So this personal relation, you see, yeah. with my client, with the subject and so, I think is a source of satisfaction and I would like very much to develop that and continue in this way. In a personal way, you see, I think I... Uh, if I w would like to resume, um, um, uh, I, uh, I would uh, say that what I am very much interested in is to emphasize uh, this, what you say in the beginning, the relation between art, architecture, and engineering. Yeah. You will always want to do bridges? Yes, yeah, certainly. They are <laughs> wonderful, <laughs> wonderful <people. laughs> Uh, there are a number of books that, that are about you. One is, is uh, this is by Michael Levin, Levin Drawings and Sculptures, Calatrava. Uh, there is Calatrava uh, Public Buildings. Here's a book. Here's also, um, as I said, you, you, you just, you cannot be to ride over any one of a number of bridges into this city early in the morning or late in the evening. If it doesn't affect you as a human being, then I don't know what does. I mean, it is so overwhelming to see how bridges link up, how they have their own essence, and how they connect you to, to some, from two dramatically different places as you come into Manhattan. Uh, oh, this is actually about Milwaukee. You know, the centerpiece of the museum that we talked about in Milwaukee is the uh, Quadraci, is that? The Quadraci. Quadraci Pavilion, Pavilion uh, which is sort of the essence of that. And it has, it has this, what, what do you call this thing? The, uh, the, uh, uh, Solar uh, a sunscreen, sunscreen or, or, yeah. or brisolet, we call brisolet, it in yes. French. And yeah. that's all working fine? Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. Thanks, God. <laughs> thank you for coming. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure thank to you. have you on the project. Thank you. Thank you. Santiago Calatrava for the hour. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Santiago Calatrava is here. The Spanish architect is also an artist and an engineer. He combines technology and art to create structures that are visually striking. Nature and movement are two guiding forces in his work. Allusions to rib cages, the human eye, and birds' wings frequently occur in his designs. Initially most well known for his signature bridges in Europe, he has recently unveiled his first building in the United States, the expansion of the Milwaukee Art Museum. We were looking for someone who would be very respectful of the two earlier buildings. And we were particularly looking for someone who would be very sensitive to our site on the lakefront because we felt that that was a kind of treasured site uh, in Milwaukee. And finally, I think we were looking for a dramatic architect. We were looking for an architect who could build a building that said art or art museum. We were looking for a signature building. I think that once 
this project was on the radar screen and it caught the imagination of the community. I was really excited about it because it did get people to start thinking, well, we can do it here in Milwaukee. I knew that Calatrava felt that we could do it here in Milwaukee. He had great, a great vision. I am sure that there is not a good project, you know, a built project, you know, without a good client behind it. Because the first vision, you know, the decision, I want to do a special building. I want to do a beautiful building. I want to do a building with this belongs much more to the client than to the architect. I am pleased to have Santiago Calatrava to this table for the first time. Welcome. Thank you. It's good to have you here. How you do those spans, how the statical, uh, the arcs or, or the, the wires works and so on. So there is certainly uh, the need uh, to have deep knowledge in engineering to approach the problem of riches. Yeah. They represent what to you? Well, you see, um, also <laughs> I think it is, uh, personally I think uh, bridges are something very moving, you know, to, to go across a difficulty, particularly here in New York, you see, it. you recognize that Manhattan yeah. is an yeah. island because the wonderful bridges around. Yeah. Some of them, they are, if you look at the Brooklyn Bridge, it's, it's Another outstanding, statement. you see, yes, with the, with the pedestrian walkway in the center, with the, all those cables, and, and some of them are uh, uh, majestuous, like the, the George Washington Bridge, and uh, in a way, you see, you can very much associate yourself to bridges, and they are important events. Mm -hmm. You once said something like, ideal is the works of engineering inspired by the soul of an artist. Yes, it could be like that. This is yeah. a good definition. Yes, yeah. it could be like that. When many people have come here on this program and talked about architecture, yeah. And some have talked about art, you know, and, and some of them believe that architecture is art. Yes. Uh, some of them believe that architecture is not art because it has function. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Well, myself, I think if you do the contraposition, for example, between as a plastic art, you know, the contraposition between architecture and sculpture. Effectively, the sculpture, you know, the, who, when it is working, you know, it can be much freer because it can work in a very, um, in a, with a very high sense of abstraction, just following the, the, the rules of the material, you know, if it is cutting stone or steel, but he's much freer than an architect. An architect has to follow function, you see, and has to do that the building is useful, and it has to produce staircases, and it has to produce uh, toilets, and it has to produce entrances and rooms and facades. You, so, so you are the whole time constrained by limitations. So there is no doubt that under an abstract point of view, you see, the rule of the sculpture is much more, it has a big freedom in itself. On the other side, you see, sculpture is superior in the scale because uh, you can penetrate it, because you can go in, you know. Yeah. And sculptures like Moore, Chidida, Dubuffet, and others, you know, they have been just yeah. dreaming to do sculptures who involve you, you know, in which you can go in. Architects can do that. So when you go into into a cathedral or when you go into a beautiful lobby or when you and then they are a, a beautiful train station yes a beautiful <laughs> train station and you feel that <laughs> when you people have said to me that that there is a there is a Calatrava look look yes yes, yes, yes. is there one for I you in your head in your mind a mm -hmm. look that says this is the creation of yes. Santiago Calatrava. I mean, you see, it may maybe be, you know. What I can uh, tell you about that, it is that, as I defined before, the problem between architects and, and uh, sculptures is a matter of freedom. I understood very early that architecture, you can project yourself in your work. As an artist, you understand, as a painter, you see, he, your personality, when you look painting of Picasso, you see it is Picasso, and Picasso wants to tell you something about himself, his life, or whatever. An architect is also capable to do that. It's maybe a more um, um, low motion music, you understand what I mean? Yeah. It's a more quiet, more intimate music. It's not so expressive, you know, as you can... It adds to their... Yes what they project to the community. Yes, and think for a moment, you see, in the United States you have many good examples, but one is particular, eloquent, it is the Golden Gate, you see. If you will for a moment imagine this bay, you see, without the bridge, it will be a beautiful bay as there are hundreds of them, you know, all along the Pacific coast. But once the bridge has been put there, it makes it unique. 
everybody understand, you know, the relation between nature and artificial work of the engineers. And it makes uh, one of the most uh, outstanding works of the 20th century. And probably also the art of the 20th century will be even a little bit poorer without the Golden Gate. Yeah, it's almost a perfect bridge. Is uh, certainly one of the most beautiful bridges <laughs> ever done. <laughs> what's the? What's, we'll get to this later. But of all the bridges you have done, does one sort of stand out for you? Does one have more? Is it was it the first one or? I, I well, you see, there is a bridge that I personally think it is. It was a, a kind of, in, not because the span, but because the signification, a kind of heroic, heroic bridge, and it was the Alamillo Bridge in Seville for the Expo '92. Yeah, right, right which it is uh, unique in its character with, with this uh, mast uh, you see and the wires and, and the deck who uh, you may maybe associate it to a harp or something like that, but it's also in itself, not only because symbolically it's very strong, but also statically yeah. is very well yeah. uh, justified. You couldn't have designed those bridges without your engineering. Well, this is, I think, uh, mm, uh, effectively, you see, the engineering uh, uh, point of view is another look to the same thing, which it is the art of construction. So the architects may maybe approach it from an optic, the engineers approach it to an optic, but the subject is the same. And effectively, you see, in, the, uh, in a bridge, you see, you have many things who, has a deep, uh, who are deeply related to the material nature of the bridge, you know. Uh, I want to first just talk some broad ideas and then we'll talk about Milwaukee, which is, um, uh, which is rather a stunning achievement on your part. Um, what's, do you define yourself as an artist, as an architect, as an engineer, or what? Well, maybe looking at it from outside, and since we are accustomed to make distinctions between the different professions, is a little bit difficult uh, to uh, understand that someone can be the three things at the same time, but when you are inside, you see that between architecture and engineering, um, there is almost no difference. And between the fact of bringing both professions, you know, to an artistical level, there is also just a goal, you know, yeah. and uh, uh, so the uh, trying to do something artistical is legitimate for an architect and an engineer. So there is, in the fact, no difference. We think of engineering as science. We think of art is art and we think of architecture somewhere in between yes which is it yes you see in the fact uh, um, the profession of architecture and engineering they are linked together by the art of construction and if you look back you know let's say 200 years ago there was effectively no difference so the the understanding of engineering as a science it may maybe be because it's looking it more from the point of view of the science of construction but still, the goal of putting a bridge in landscape or putting a cathedral in the middle of a city is the same, uh, the same thing. I mean, a bridge uh, has an impact, you see, and a presence, and uh, dignifies the landscape in a way, or it is pot uh, mm. potentially can do that. It can enhance the landscape. Exactly. Can enhance places that exactly. don't have exactly. a quality. Once a bridge is yeah. there, it can give them something yeah. because it spans and 